freaking game! Okay, let's back up. Starlink Battle for Atlas is an open world space game that, in the Switch version, contains Star Fox characters and elements. This, the remix behind me, uh, my talking at least, right now, is from Starlink as well. Just as a heads up, this is not a spoiler free review, so if you care about spoilers, story otherwise, then click off this video. I'll also not be talking about the Xbox or PS4 versions, because I don't have those. Only the version on the beautiful, beautiful Switch. <laughs> now, with that out of the way, let's get into this. To start off with, I bought the Star Fox bundle at my local Target, if you can have a 45 minute drive local, for 30 bucks. Typically, it's 80, but I got it on sale. Yoo -hoo. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Star Fox bundle included a physical R-Wing, flamethrower, and frost barrage weapon, a digital Xeanth ship, and a shredder weapon. It also included two pilots, Fox McCloud, obviously, and Mason, or as my club, check out the, the Geek Meat podcast down below, called him Manson. Just two days before I started working on this script, and only a day before I beat the game, I shelled out $13 for extra weapons and a new pilot, Eli. Each ship and pilot has their own attributes and abilities. For example, I'll use the ship and pilot, basically, that I played the whole game with. Fox and his trusty R-Wing. To my knowledge, the R-Wing is the only ship with, with a built-in weapon system. It also has its own mod line, which is specific to the R-Wing and can only be used, which I use a lot. <laughs> That's basically what I use. Its laser cannons are built right in. You can spam the button to make it fire, or like DK's coconut gun, you can let it fire in spurts. Which, after trying it both ways, I like the spurts of multiple blasts over spamming it because it's just easier to fire in spurts. You can also hold down the button for a charge shot, akin to Samus's from Smash Bros. or traditional Metroid. The R-Wing is also fast and agile compared to the Zenth ship, which is heavier and slower. However, you can still add weapons to the R-Wing just like every other ship. Fox has what's called a pilot ability, just like every other pilot. His pilot ability is to call upon a single member of the Star Fox team, Flippy, Falco, or Peppy, to fight alongside you. However, I found it almost useless until later on, because it, at first it can only kill one enemy at once, which I guess can be useful occasionally, but I never found a good use for it. Later on though, you can upgrade it so they can kill more than one, and even fight on their own. That does take a while though. As far as gameplay controls go, I love it so much, but I do have some nitpicks about it. One, the big one, is enemy variety. I'd say that's my biggest complaint is with the imps. Oh. My god, I hate these freaking things. They're everywhere. <laughs> you have to kill their hives to build outposts, which more on that later. You have to kill them after you open a heat gravity or cold cast, which are basically just chests with things inside of them. And plenty of enemies spawn them, and the list goes on and on and on. They're small, annoying, and everywhere. The rest of the enemies are cool, but I just don't think there's enough variety. You have the normal cyclopses with fire, ice, and crush variants, which are cool, and I like them a lot. There's an underused shielded cyclops with only the normal variety as well, but they add a nice challenging pattern into the mix. However, aside from said shielded cyclops, you see them everywhere. Not as much as those darn imps though. The fire ones can freeze, the ice ones can burn, the crush ones can just die. More on tight matchups in a second, but seriously, I, I hate these imps so much. And then you have the abnormal enemies. I'd say this is where the combat enemies shine. You have the giants in ice, fire, and crush variants. These giants are behemoths that have their own attributes. The ice giant has a shield and a staff, which is used to shoot ice and other things at you. The fire one has a big gun and can fly, so it hits you with meteor and fire attacks. The crush giant has a giant cannon on his back, which is used to shoot vortexes that have studied damage to you and is very difficult to get out of. They also sound like transformers. They all spawn lots of imps. That's why I love killing them. The less imps that have the potential to live, the better. I guess I should explain the weapon types and their effects, huh? Well, to start off, I'll give you the names and types of the weapons. The fire weapon is the flamethrower. The frost weapons, which is the frost barrage and hailstorm. The instant freeze weapon, freeze gray mark II. The crush, gravity weapon, the crusher. The meteor weapons, the meteor mark II and volcano. The vortex weapons, the nullifier and the imploder. The stasis weapon, the levitator, and finally, all the goddamn kinetic weapons. You have the Shredder and Shredder Mark II, the Iron Fist, and the two that I don't have my own image for because I lost my SD card adapter before I did this. God dang it! Anyway, you have the Shockwave and the ga Gas Gun. How in the world do you say that? Gas Gun? Okay. Okay, we're good. Now, moving is pretty standard. You move with the left stick and look around with the right. Boost is A, jump is B, shield is X. Y does not seem to do anything. 
you activate your pilot ability with L, which is annoying on the Switch because I constantly kept accidentally using it when I was firing the Irwing's laser cannons. Use the D-pad to switch objectives. You can take full flight by holding R and then the controls change slightly. You still have to use the left stick to move forward and do different, use the thrust and whatever, but B button has no use in flight except in space, which it can be used to move vertically, which you normally can't do. Boosting is the same. In both cases, you can press down the right stick to get a zoomed in view. The minus button is the map, which you can see everything that you'll need to, as long as you put up observatories. You can see electrum veins, which if you pluck pieces off you get electrum from it, which is fuel and currency, but more on that later. You can see warden spires, basically giant loot towers, and all the outposts, which are different utilities that you can get Electrum and other resources. They also boost your reliance on the single planet, the outposts. Legion extractors and crash drakes, well, they're both legion contraptions that yield loot, but you have to fight through hordes of legion with extractors. You must destroy it to reach full alliance, along with primes and dreadnoughts, which are boss fights on the planets in space respectively. More on that later though. You need to remove the extractors to reach full alliance, which gives different perks and required to complete the game. You have to reach 100% alliance all over Atlas at least once. Observe how to fight an extractor. Primes are complex boss fights that you must go through multiple phases, in many cases, to destroy them. They have weak points under their face plates or undersides. Observe. Dreadnoughts are a bit complex, and I'm not sure if I want to spoil this, even if you do care about spoilers, so find that elsewhere or just play the game yourself, which I highly recommend. On to outposts. Outposts are your main source of income in mods. There are five types of outposts. First, there's the observatories. These serve the purpose of allowing you to see portions of the planet. They look cool, but other than that, I do have to give them credit, because without them, the game would be really annoying, because you'd have to explore every square inch of the planet. They're pretty cheap to build, only needing about 5,000 Electrum, which at first is kind of expensive, but once you build 4 or 5 refineries you'll be fine. As of writing this, I have 2.5 MILLION Electrum and I'm still gaining more, which that didn't take me long at all. I had spent at least 2 million just a few days ago as of writing this, and as of recording this about 4 days ago, and I'm already back up to 2 million. I spent 3 million on super good mods, which more on that later. Now refineries. These will take various metals that you collect and different ore deposits and things like that, and they'll give you electrum. Like all outposts, they'll also take cores and from things like extractors and primes and give you nova and electrum. Not only that, but they'll also periodically give you large sums of electrum, which makes them invaluable. Sadly, they don't grant nova on the regular, but hey, what can you do? 
Workshops can build mods and cores, not the same ones for refineries, and ammo for guns, because instead of having a core like the ship does, they have ammo in the weapons that your ships and weapons can use. Mods boost stats and sometimes add effects. You spend electrum to buy powerful ones, or they send you some that you can fuse into better ones. Personally, I use as many mods as I can on my weapons and ships. Armories defend the planet while you are away. They also assist in taking out stuff while you were there as well. They are the most expensive normal outposts to build an upgrade. I said normal because there's, the last one is the Starlink Tower, which only serves story purpose as far as I know. Speaking of the story, I love this story so much. So, there's a ragtag group of explorers from Earth, with their captain, St. Grant. He can make Nova. Both Nova and Electrum is used as currency, but in-universe, it's means of fuel as well. Nova is more rare and needs to be refined. Nova is an even better fuel, and it is used for bigger purchases. St. Grant has a history of learning how to make Nova from the Wardens, which are basically the gods of this, this area. Anyway, the Legion ambush them, and they go out to defeat them, so they will survive and make it to the Wonderland before them. Atlas. In the Star Fox DLC, cutscene video credit in the bottom right, because I didn't record this, I didn't think I'd be making a review until halfway through the game. <laughs> Fox and his crew jump in to help. Then the story begins. Here's the chronicles from the game on screen as I describe them, as well as the cutscene that goes along with it, if I can find it easily. St. Grand gets captured and taken over to the Legion HQ to make a weapon for their leader, Grax. Grax wanted St. Grand to make Nova as well. The crew try to fight off Legion, then cr crash land on a planet called Karit. Once the gang lands on Carrot, they notice their flight engines are down and their ship needs major repairs. They need to find Nova so they can make their ship operational again. They find contact with the researchers and scientists on Karit called the Expedition. Carl is their leader, and after giving Carl some help, well, they're on board. Karit scientists say that the only thing that they can have is Electrum, but they find other ways to get Nova, and that's extracting it from the Equinox's core which is the ship. The Equinox become operational and the game fixes their flight engines. After that, they start their search for St. Grand around Atlas. And the Star Fox crew decides that they should start looking for Wolf around the same time. However, I didn't do that side quest until after I completed the main story. Starlink and Star Fox crew, I'm just going to save the game from now on, then try to save someone, but as it turns out, that ship was an outlaw ship. Outlaws are from all over Atlas, and add a bit of spice to the gameplay. They then land on Haven and make allies with the Prospectors and their leader Eli. The Chronicles describe them as tough folk, but they're pleasant enough. They're the main suppliers of Electrum for the gang, and also the street smart supplier as well, so they're a huge help in finding resources and St. Grand. Afterwards, they find a Warden Spire, which are loot deposits, and it allowed them to learn that an alien bird man named Grax is heading the Legion and a separate cult. This leads the gang to Sonatus, where they encountered a Legion Prime. Thankfully, the Expedition studied it, and so they knew what to do. They stole the core, the claim that you can sell from the Prime, and that was that. They then learn that they have to head to Vilas, and they find a little resistance there. Prospectors helped out in strengthening the Alliance around the place. An outlaw approaches the Equinox and shows the gang the dreadnought that has been spying on them, and the one that holds St. Grant. The gang kills it, and the outlaw joins the team. But, uh-oh, spaghetti -o! St. Grand is dead. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Anyway, they got him off the Dreadnought, but Grax had done too much damage to him. As St. Grand died, he pointed them to, to a Warden Station. So they mod the Equinox using Starlink Towers so that they can jump to said Warden Station. Observe the final battle with Grax. That's all the story you need. Quit hiding, Grax! <laughs> I am in the stars. I am on every planet in Atlas. I surround you. So come bear witness as I claim every world in this galaxy. You've done a lot of damage here, Grax. That ends now. I'm lit up. Come out and face me yourself. You thought you would challenge me? The Wardens lifted me from darkness. They gave me Nova. They chose me. You, huh, you are a speck of dust on the pages of history. <laughs> Like a child, 
and power you don't understand. Just as the old wardens did. In their fear, they abandoned the Legion. You seek to destroy them, but I... I have made them so much more. Now I am the Warden. My golden scion will lead the harvest and cast this galaxy into a new age. Your leader understood. Afterward, there's still some Legion to mop up. Dreadnoughts respawn, but those Dreadnoughts spawn more Primes, making it harder to get full Alliance. But I haven't done the same Grand Side Quest, because I didn't before I started working on this, and I don't want to get more footage, so there. Don't even have my SD card adapter. Now, I forgot to write this down, because I'm an idiot. But here's the Star Fox story from what I can remember, because there were no Chronicles for that. Basically, they find that Star Wolf is an Atlas. Then, they track down a person named Cash in space at his outlaw base. Cash then accidentally leads them to the what they thought was his base of operations, a, a prison in the snow planet. I forget which one that was. It was not a Char, but whatever. And basically, that's a trap for them. They have to rescue some researchers, but they are ambushed by another outlaw that Wolf has hired. And from there, they go to a totally different planet. And that leads them, I think it's Vilas actually, that leads them to a warehouse after fighting another outlaw boss that takes them to where Wolf was keeping Legion Primes. He was going to send those Primes back to Lilac so that he could just take over the place. He can't even control them. However, he just wanted to destroy the place. It finally then leads into space where there's this huge energy field surrounding a giant ship that was going to haul these primes there. The gang destroys, not, not just the Star Fox crew, nobody else, destroys 
the generators around it. Goodbye, Star Fox. Wait, the spin drive's exposed. We need to take it out before Wolf can get away. Wolf gets out, and we st a, a dogfight begins between Fox and Wolf. Fox eventually beats Wolf, and he goes flying away into space. No! This isn't over, Fox. I don't know what happens after that, I'll just have to buy the next uh, Star Fox game. But I completed the side quest. So, hey, it was a good time, it was short, I beat it in about an hour, but Hey, it was it was short. It was fun. I liked it. So I, I give that one a ten out of ten. And speaking of that, my overall thoughts: I had a blast. I thought it was great. It's definitely in my top three. If Pokemon White is a one and ET for the Atari is a ten, I'd give it a two or three. I'm not sure. I love Sonic Generations, but I'm not sure if I like it more than Starlink. I mean, they're very different games. One is a time travel themed linear 3D and 2D platformer, and the other is an open world space action adventure shooter thing. I went back and revisited some of the games that were in my top 10, and I know where to, I don't, and I know where to put it. I still love Pokemon White the most overall. I had fun playing the game and making the review. someday if I ever fully replay and record Pokemon White, I'll make a review on it in a heartbeat. I'm so happy that I was able to make this, and I, I need you guys to let me know if you want more like this. I try to keep this one as short as possible while still going in depth. My original script had about 40 minutes. Uh, this is about 20, so I did quite a bit. Also, let me know what I can do better next time. Like my channel description says, I'm always open to ways that I can improve. With that said, leave a like, subscribe, and I guess I'll see you guys next time.